I'm Bill Takis. I'm the Director of Product Management for Gear 6. Um, Gear 6 is the first and leading provider of Memcache D solutions, um, typically looking at uh, Memcache D deployed in high availability or uh, websites that have a lot of dynamic content or need to scale. You can think of the uh, heavy consumers of Memcache D as the leading websites that you hear about a lot today, Facebook, Twitter, um, sites like that. Um, Memcache D, for those who don't know, is a distributed memory um, object cache. Um, pretty generic in nature, but again, typically used to speed up websites or increase their performance. Um, my boss uh, likes to call Memcached D crack for web developers. Um, it's really easy to get started with Memcached D. It doesn't take a lot to put into your architecture and can dramatically inc improve the performance of your site. And uh, what we've seen, Gear 6 has been in the cache business for over two and a half years. We have a NFS cache product we've had on the street for quite a while. But we've really seen the rise of the cached here in these dynamic uh, uh, websites, or uh, sites that have a lot of dynamic content to them. And they've come, because Memcache D is easy to deploy and easy to use, um, they've become, it's become a critical piece of their architecture and infrastructure to the point where if they lose, start to lose the cache or lose cache servers, it has dramatic effects on the site or site performance. So what so are, the, what are the, the specific challenges right. here so, that, that Gear 6 is uh, right. trying to address? So obviously the first challenge is, is um, you know, the solution here is just to continue to add servers to increase your cache tier. So a lot of these sites are running out of rack space, cooling, and power. So we've implemented a solution that includes both hardware and software, and we use a combination of both DRAM and flash to lower the cost of the cache. We've also taken some of that DRAM to kind of manage the SSD drives, the flash drives, to ensure that they're reliable and robust and they have a long life. The other thing that's happened is, is that because, as I mentioned, you know, if you lose cache tier or lose any of the servers in your cache tier, you get uh, effects on your site performance. We've started to add high availability features into the into Memcache D and into the Memcache D engine as opposed to the client. So we can do replication failover um, within the cache. Um, we typically deploy in two 1U um, units. Um, the cache can be replicated or you can have essentially think of it as uh, one, uh, one device there ready to pick up in case the other one fails. So if you lose a particular uh, Gear 6 device for whatever reason, um, the other one could be mirrored and they're ready to go. Um, or um, if your site is architected such that uh, a cache hit, uh, a loss of a cache won't uh, hurt you too bad, you can have one kind of there as a hot spare ready to go um, in case there's a failure. The other thing that gives us is a really nice way to do uh, maintenance upgrades and software upgrades. So deployed into one new units, we can move the cache to one of the units, upgrade the other one, and then move things back. So we've got some pretty... Um, nice things that we've done there. The other thing that we've done is we've made some improvements in the Memcache D uh, itself. Um, we've replaced the slab-based allocate, uh, allocator with a block-based allocator, so you can do a little bit finer grain um, allocation operations um, and have a bit more control over the cache. We've removed the one megabyte um, object limit and then we've uh, improved the eviction algorithm. So we put in a cost-based eviction algorithm as opposed to the LRU eviction algorithm that's standard. And then the last thing that we've done, um, them being a good open source company, is we've made some open source contributions back. Um, we've contributed back our stats package. So we've created a whole stats package for Memcache D. So you can kind of see what's going on in the cache in terms of hot, uh, top keys used, uh, you know, top sets, top gets. Um, uh, 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 get a heat map, if you will, of the cache, so kind of see what's uh, happening in that way, and a whole host of other uh, stats. That's freely available on Google Code, so you can go, if you um, uh, Google Stats Proxy, Google Code, you can find it there, download it, and use that uh, uh, open source. So so your solution then is both like software and hardware? It is. It's a, and, and we're really, one of the things that differentiates us from our competitors is we're really focused on the software side. Um, as opposed to the hardware side. Um, we run on industry standard hardware. There's nothing special about our hardware. So, um, in fact, in upcoming releases, we'll certify on other Tier 1 hardware vendors, Dell, HP, um, based on customer need. So there's really nothing proprietary unique about the hardware. A lot of our competitors have um, uh, devices out there, uh, typical appliances that are solely focused on you know, the hardware side of the equation. 
Um, a couple other open source contributions I want to mention. We built a testing harness called Brutus for the cached here. So you can kind of do a load and see what the effects are um, of the cache and kind of uh, stressing that cache. And then the last thing we've done, which I think is pretty interesting, is we built a, um, a Wireshark plugin so that you can actually see the cache live as it's going through cache operations live. So all that stuff's up on Google Code. Or you can go to the dev.gear6.com and pick it up there as well. So there's been a discussion of Memcached implementation from a number of the really large players in the, uh, uh, in the industry and in some of the presentations today. One of the questions I have is, is how are, are we likely to see uh, folks with websites that perhaps aren't as massive finding a, a, a use for this? What do you see as the, as the, the progression for usage of Memcached and, and how does how does that lay out for you know uh, folks offering a product such as yourself? Yeah, so we you know so our 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 thinking is is that the growth of the dynamic the dynamic nature of websites and dynamic content that's going to grow. It's not going to contract. So uh, the need for Memcached is going to proliferate. And uh, I had mentioned the cached here in the beginning. We really see that continuing to grow. And I you know we think that um, you know the sites even though that they are small are going to continue to have this growth and con proliferation of content. Um, you know, the marketer's dream, um, I, I think the Pew Institute, who does a lot of work on how users use the Internet, believe the stats, something north of 80% of the users start their web browsing with a search. So, you know, the marketer's dream is to deliver the right content based on that search. Well, that stuff's going to have to be dynamic. So to be competitive in this landscape, you're going to have to deliver this content on a dynamic basis. So, um, I, you know, if you're using MySQL um, or the LAMP stack, you know, Memcache is really the answer to make sure that you can kind of grow and maintain your performance. At least that's what we're, that's what we're thinking. And betting on it at the same time. Okay. Thanks a lot, Phil. Sure.